that's what I'm talking about, Paul George. That is what I'm talking about. 37 points? 37 points? You came out here and dropped 37 points? Okay. You know what? Got to do it. Paul George, three straight games, 30-plus points. Not only, tonight I told you, you needed to drop 30-plus points and be the main reason why this team won tonight. You had to carry them, and you did exactly that. I'll tell you this. Playoff P, gone. Way off P, gone. Pandemic P, gone. My friend, welcome back, Indiana P. This is the same guy that used to torment me when I was younger, watching him and his Pacers go head to head with LeBron and the Miami Heat. This is that same guy, that same guy, consistently giving you great performance after great performance and leading his team to wins against my Miami Heat team. It was that same guy. He's back. Three straight games, 30 plus points from Paul George, and tonight with no Kawhi Leonard. He got it done. He led this team to a victory in Utah, the same place that tormented him years ago. He's back. He's back. This is the Paul George I'm talking about. This is the superstar we see in the regular season. This is the guy you saw in Indiana in the postseason. This is what I'm talking about. By the way, Clippers, well done today. You did exactly what I told you guys to do. Earlier today, I said in order for the Clippers to pull off an upset, you need Paul George to play like the superstar he is and play the same way he played in games three and four. He needed to play like that tonight. He did so with 37 points. Then I said you needed both your other guys to show up. Reggie Jackson, Marcus Morris, both of them had to show up. Both guys dropped 20 plus points today. And they hit key shots and key moments. Reggie Jackson tonight, my God. <laughs> this guy just started getting disrespectful. Matter of fact, the whole Clippers squad just started being very disrespectful to Rudy Gobert. You had Reggie Jackson putting Rudy Gobert in the torture chamber. And then out of nowhere, you have Terrence Mann baptizing this dude. He posterized him. Terrence Mann just posterized the three-time Defensive player of the, year, of the year. How? How does Terrence Mann posterize Rudy Gobert? Not only that, he did it in crunch time. Terrence Mann posterized the three-time defensive player of the year in crunch time. Yo, Clippers, what's going on? I didn't know y'all like this. You know what? This just continues to show exactly why the Clippers are the main protagonists. I'm telling you, the Clippers are the main protagonists. They're the main protagonists. This is not supposed to happen. This is not normal. You can't look bad and inconsistent for the first two games of the series, be down 0-2, and then just take over after that. What's worse is you lost your best player, and you still find a way to get a win on the road. How does that happen? Now with this win, let's take a knee for a quick second. My fan, let's take both knees and pray. Pray to the basketball gods that Kawhi Leonard's injury is not serious. And let it just be some minor knee injury and hope that he will still be available for the postseason. Do not let it be an ACL injury. Do not let it be severe. Please let it be something small that Kawhi Leonard can come back from and get back in this series. Because if the Clippers can win game six at home, which it looks like they can, because the way they're playing, they're playing better than the Utah Jazz. If they can get it done, they're heading to their first ever Western Conference Finals in franchise history. And you, I, I'm telling you, bro, Kawhi has to be here, man. After what KD pulled, it, I'm telling you, the Nets look like they're going to the finals. We cannot have a Lake on Lakers, a Clippers Nets Finals. Without Kawhi there, we need KD versus Kawhi. The NBA streets need KD versus Kawhi. He has to be good. Basketball guys, you can't do this. You see, this is a golden opportunity. Kawhi has to be fine. Paul George is showing up. He's playing like a superstar. Indiana P is back. He's got to show up, man. He's got to. But, man, I can't believe this, man. The, the, the Clippers came out here and played fantastic basketball because – if you look at the situation in the first half, it should not have been a five-point game going to half. The Utah Jazz hit 17 threes in the first half. They couldn't miss. They were.
were hitting everything. Bogdanovich was playing out of his mind. He had 32 points tonight. My goodness, they couldn't miss a three. It was a difference. Man, a tale of two halves for the Utah Jazz. First half, they were lighting that arena up because they couldn't miss from three. Second half, they couldn't buy a shot. They were ice cold. They couldn't buy a shot. They couldn't buy a three to save their lives. My God. I think that's one of the biggest different make, um, difference makers in this game. The second biggest difference maker, Donovan Mitchell did not have a great game. I think he, when he scored 22 points, he did not have that high-level superstar game that he's been having where he's dropped like 30-plus points in like, what, six straight games? He didn't have that game tonight. He was very poor shooting the ball. He was very inefficient. And I think that overall told the tale of how this game all went because if, if – if Donovan Mitchell was balling out like a superstar and he dropped 30 points tonight, Utah takes the win and they have a 3-2 lead. But, you know, those are the two main things. Donovan Mitchell wasn't a superstar tonight. He didn't play like a superstar, you know, because he just wasn't efficient. He just wasn't hitting the shots he normally hits. And the Utah Jazz as a whole just couldn't buy a three in the second half. That was a difference maker. But we all should have known that the, the Clippers would have been able to pull this off when they went into halftime. You hit that many threes and it's a five-point game going into half. It, was, it should have been clear as day to everybody the Clippers have a real good chance of winning this. If Paul George plays the same way in the second half that he did in the first half, and Reggie Jackson continues to play well, and Marcus Morris continues to play well, then I'm telling you, they would have pulled off in the second half. That's exactly what happened, and that's why they won the game. Um, as for the Jazz, I mean, everyone showed up, you know. Bogdanovich balled out with 32 points. Ingles showed up. O'Neal came out here, and he balled out. And he, just, he made some plays. He wasn't fantastic, but he made some plays. He made some shots. Um, Clarkson showed up as well. What else can you ask from these guys? Rudy Gobert, he also showed up. Though he had zero blocks in this game. Zero blocks from the three-time defensive player of the year. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. But yeah, the guys as a whole showed up. It's just Donovan Mitchell didn't play at their superstar level. He didn't have a superstar level performance tonight, which again, it's bound to happen, which is fine. You know, you're not always going to go out there and play your best game. But at the same time, if you're not playing your best game, then the team as a whole needs to be able to hit their threes. You fell in love with the three because of how well you were shooting in the first half. You kept chucking them in the second half, and it just was not working out. And ultimately, that was the difference maker. You kept missing threes, and the Clippers continued to capitalize on it. So that was a tale of two halves there for the Jazz. But man, wow. The Clippers really pulled it off. What made it special is they pulled it off by doing exactly what I said they needed to do. I said, Paul George needs to go out there and drop 30-plus points, and you need to get 20-plus points from both Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris. If you can get that and play solid defense, you're going to win this game. And the Clippers actually went out there and did it. Wow. They stepped up, man. They stepped up big. In Kawhi Leonard's absence, this team stepped up and won the game. Honestly, throughout this entire series, looking at... The Clippers, they've just been better than the Jazz. Like, I've, I've always said this. The Clippers are the most talented team left in the Western Conference. If they play up to their potential, they should easily be in the NBA Finals. It's just that they don't always play up to their potential. Hence, Game 1 and Game 2. There are moments where they do, and we saw it in the first two games, but they don't play like that for most, if not the whole game. And since Game 2, that's been a difference maker. A flip was switched, and all of a sudden... Game three, game four, and now game five, the Clippers just straight up outplayed the Utah Jazz. Can't rely. This is tough. And again, the absence of Conley is still alarming, and it's there. They desperately need Conley. It, at this, they might just throw him out there for game six because this is do or die. You need Conley. The Jazz cannot beat this Clippers team without Mike Conley. Despite the fact Kawhi Leonard is gone. This was a prime opportunity for the Jazz to take over. Kawhi is out. Their best player is out. This is, that's a 30 point per game score. That's gone. A top five player, gone. Kawhi Leonard was leading the postseason in scoring, gone. By the way, he was uh, averaging 30 points a game on like the highest true shooting percentage in NBA history. It was crazy. Or in playoff history. It was crazy. Like, Kawhi Leonard has been insanely efficient. It's crazy. And they lost that guy. But they still found a way to win. Wow. Utah blew a great opportunity to take control right here. And really put the pressure. Well done, Clippers. Well done. You're one game away from reaching your first Western Conference Finals in franchise history. Don't screw it up. 
We don't know what's happening with Kawhi Leonard. He may very well miss this series. That's fine. As long as he can come back for the Western Conference Finals, if the Clippers can make it there, then that's different. But we, we just don't all right now. Prayers up, and we hope the best for Kawhi. We hope the best for Kawhi. That's all I can say. We hope the best for Kawhi. Hopefully, it is just a knee injury. It's not an ACL injury. When we get more information, we'll find out about it. But so far, from the recent reports, they have been saying ACL injury, but we're just hoping that it's not the case because it's not 100% confirmed. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, Paul George, well done. Well done. I can't give you any more credit. Well done. You couldn't have played better than you did tonight. You did exactly what the team needed to do. You carried them. You, you carried them, man. You put the team on your back. With Kawhi Leonard out, you put the team on your back on the road in Utah, a place where all this mess started for you. You came out there. You showed up. You bought like a superstar, and you looked like Indiana Pete because that's the same Paul George I remember seeing from his Indiana days. So well done to you. Congratulations to the LA Clippers on getting this win. Now you get to go home for game six. And we'll see if you can close it out and reach your first ever Western Conference Finals. Game six is going to be crazy. And knowing Kawhi is not playing in that game, or most likely not going to, because I don't, again, I doubt he'll be able to go for game six if he is able to return. But, you know, knowing that Kawhi's not going to be there, Paul George, I'm going to need this same performance again. You're doing well. You're playing fantastic now. You're looking like the superstar we expect you to be. Don't ruin it, man. Don't mess it up. Go out there and play the same way in game six. That's all we ask for. But with that being said, man, Utah, you ruined a great opportunity. Now you got to fight for your lives on the road in game six. We'll see what happens there. With that being said, man, that is all I got. And I'm out of here, man. Peace.